Hey guys, it's Malfo here once again with a fairly long overdue video. It's a build I've been playing for damn near a month at this point. Uh, just trying to get it done throughout the events that started happening um, that I played a lot of and then various other things, uh, various other games as well. And uh, the build in question is Explosive Arrow Hit Base with Crit, sort of Crit Base, Hit Base, uh, Deadeye. So you've seen plenty of explosive arrows that do uh, ignite, and they are pretty damn good, and this one is um, just not ignite, basically. So you are stacking attack speed, you are stacking crit, and just basic damage. It's treated kind of like a normal bow build, um, but it is still using the gem and gem level, and thus the explosion for most of its damage and scaling. Um, in this version I'm using a Quill Rain because it just kind of made more sense than um, anything else. I tried to look into a plus two plus one bow or high tri Eli bow or high attack speed, all of that. And um, unless you're getting a pretty low amount of um, plus levels from your chest, and my chest has plus four to our levels that you see a bit later, unless you're getting a really plus low amount of um, levels and thus your flat extra damage is going to be kind of bad, uh, Quill Rain outscales it quite profusely. And uh, you can see it gets pretty damn crazy with the MTX and Echoing Shrine, and it's basically the Michael Bay movie of um, builds. That just thanks to the Explosive Arrow microtransaction and also Despair Herald of Ash. And then once you stack up all of that attack speed, it gets pretty fucking crazy. Uh, and it's it's satisfying. It's a fast build, and I've gone out of my way to make it as meme fast as possible. Um, not within, you know, outside of reason, but basically I'm running the haste aura with the haste uh, sublime gem, and then took a bit of extra attack speed, movement speed across the place when I otherwise wouldn't have done so, just because more attack speed, more explosions, uh, feels kind of a bit more. So in the end, the result is a pretty damn fast build, fairly squish, nothing too special on defensive maneuver front, uh, just the usual capped um, spell suppress, a little bit of evasion, but uh, importantly, we do have a lot of movement speed, and that is a pretty good defensive uh, measure. So I have taken on three or four Ubers, two or three Ubers, I don't know, something like that, and it is pretty handy having all this extra movement speed to dodge various attacks. So not getting hit is still one of the best defenses in the game. And uh, having the movement speed and the attack speed and the mobility uh, does let you kind of do that. So not really sure what else there is to say about the build itself. It's basically explosive arrow, um, but you're hitting instead of igniting and um, I tried to go through a dead eye perspective for more arrows, um, far shot, and also a stronger mark. Unfortunately, sniper's mark, which I really wanted to make a thing and just shoot projectiles all over the place, sniper's mark doesn't work because uh, with explosive arrow, the arrow and the fuse must actually stick in the target, and that means you basically can't have any other funky shit happening. You can't have fork, chain, pierce, uh, and you can't have sniper's mark on that uh, your target you want to actually kill because everything's just gonna like chain off of it or uh, bounce off of it and then the resulting place is where the uh, explosion explosion is actually gonna happen. So with far shot you can see that our barrage becomes basically a laser. It's kind of cool in that sense um, and the DPS it's a, it's okay. Like, I was honestly hoping for a bit more single target damage for what the build is, basically, but it clears really well, and then single target, it's hard to say, it's got something like 10 to 15 million, maybe, and it depends on um, how much standing still you can get and the distance between you and the enemy. So, this here is going to be the Uber Maven, then I've got, I think, a regular Cirrus, and then a Uber Shaper lined up and um, got them all pretty comfortably first try, but it does rely, uh, force you to kind of rely on doing mechanics uh, because this DPS isn't enough to just obliterate quickly and you're not super tanky enough to be able to like take a lot of damage. Uh, with the spell suppress being capped means I actually can take most of these uh, spells at least one or two hits of, but 
as you can see, the vast amounts of movement speed actually helps you to um, avoid things pretty damn nicely. And the only real annoying thing is with far shot, once you're this much of a laser, you have to be really pinpoint precise with where you're going to be shooting, otherwise you miss altogether and do no damage. So <clears throat> anytime the boss kind of goes off screen, disappears for a second, um, and I try and find it, I am sometimes just straight up missing and hitting nothing for a little bit. But all in all, for a hit-based explosive arrow that's basically relying on a quill rain for damage, um, it does pretty well. We've also got uh, totems um, to help us get to our 20 stacks of fuse quicker because once you get to your 20 stacks that's when you get your payload explosion going off. It's either based on the duration or whether or not you hit those stacks. If you hit the stacks then uh, the duration doesn't matter. And with the current attack speed I have and the totems we're definitely hitting the um, 20 fuse duration, uh, 20 fuse limit every like 0.3 seconds or some shit. Um, so it leads to be an alright playstyle, a kind of decent version of Explosive Arrow. I don't really know how the uh, Ignite versions go, but I imagine they go with a lot more defense and not much less DPS, so it might still not really be worth trying to build this kind of Explosive Arrow. Um, but I do think hit-based Explosive Arrow has some sort of potential future, or viability in the game um, if you want to try looking into various other versions. The only thing is you kind of have to really be reliable with your damage so you have to pretty much cap your crit um, and make sure that you have got your fuse limits happening or your duration at a certain point that you're happy with because um, getting the maximum stacks uh, of your um, explosion is really important for scaling in this type of a build. So, not sure I fully recommend it, but it was a lot of fun, it's very fast, it maps fast, it gets XP fast. Either way, I will um, go ahead and show you how I built the character so far. So there's the character, level 92, Falge, Devcheck, Egwaf, um, two emotes of frogs with baguettes um, attacking Chris Wilson in the center. That's the name. Trust me, it makes sense. Uh, it is a dead eye, it is based around Explosive Arrow, and um, in this case around a Quill Rain as I mentioned. Um, our Quill Rain here does have additional arrow on it, uh, it cost 50c, it, yeah, I don't know, no one really cared about them, and that's kind of what it looks like. You do have a lot of attack speed in this case, um, maybe about 10 a second without buffs, so it goes even higher, and um, the, like I said, the whole reason that I could really kind of pull off a cool rain super easily is a plus two plus two chest uh, with tainted fusings being as, you know, common and powerful as they are for six linking corrupted chests. It's not too unreasonable to do uh, various chests that give plus two plus two to various different things and then try and build around them. Um, I think this chest was, I don't know, maybe like a divine or some shit, and then linking it up doesn't cost much at all with the tainted fusings. Uh, so with the explosive arrow in there, it's level 24, still nothing too special, but um, that's what we're at. Uh, could have a level 21 even, but I currently am just sitting on a crit strike um, alt quality. So you could instead go a bow that does pretty conventional explosive arrow stuff like attack speed plus gems uh, a different chest something like that or you can go a pure tri ellie um, bow or large flat damage and scale flat damage but in the version i'm doing here it basically only has exploding damage so the arrows of the original hit um, do pretty close to nothing. So if we have a look at our arrows, for example, with all of those arrows, they're going to do pretty much nothing. It's only the fuses and the explosion afterwards that does any damage. But you can do it in a way where um, damage is going to add to the arrows and then also to the explosion. If you do it that way, though, um, you might be killing enemies before the fuse pops. Uh, and I don't know, there might be problems there. But uh, that's kind of how I wanted to do it. And that was going to be my plan, a try Ellie bow and do all kinds of elements. But Quirin just seemed to scale a little bit better with um, a high level explosive arrow. Uh, not much better, only a little bit. But then it also had a lot of cool attack speed and I thought, fuck it, let's go with that. 
So that's the build. That's uh, kind of what I went with. The links here are Explosive Arrow, Mirage Archer Support, which I do sub out for single target. So I'm just pure barrage. Um, then have Ellie Damage with Attacks, uh, Inspiration, Less Duration, and Increased Area. It is a bit of a filthy swap for um, Clear versus Single Target. So for Clear, I am using these setup, this gem setup, and then for Single Target, it's Barrage and Power instead of Less Duration, and Conk Effect instead of Increased Area. So it's a bit of a filthy swap, but even the Clear setup does really good Single Target. So anything below proper bosses is completely fine to have the uh, AoE do what it does. Um, and then building around leadership's price uh, just to get all kinds of conflicts for Ignite, um, Chill, Freeze, Shock, none of that works. And then we instead do Scorching, Brittle, and Sap. The main thing is just for the Brittle uh, to cap out crit. Once again, when I went with Cool Rain, I figured got to fi uh, fix that crit somehow. And um, this is going to be the easiest way. And then Scorching for a bit of extra... Ellie Pen. Um, otherwise, you could use Secrets of Suffering Gem uh, Jewel, but it isn't really going to get us as far unless you're also doing a lot of cold damage. Um, just being pure fire works too, but then you could do a Anger Sublime Vision for Scorch instead, or you can go kind of a just regular setup with some Trinity and a regular bow. I think there's a few different flexible ways of doing explosive arrow and I did one a year or so ago as an inquisitor and it wasn't the best example and it still worked well enough and from that example I thought I could also easily do a dead eye so if you want to look at that one and then try and um, take it to a dead eye perspective it works just as well but this sublime vision I bought just because I was trying to meme my way into as much haste and attack speed, movement speed as possible. So I'm using haste with supreme ego, a little bit of um, aura buffs and stuff, and this sublime vision that gives action speed and increased effect of the haste. So the only thing I'm using is haste and herald of ash. And uh, yeah, it gives us a lot of extra attack speed in the end. So we do also have three totems that help um, add our fuses in. So Explosive Arrow, Focus Ballista, Ballista Totem, Inspiration, Barrage, and Crit Strikes. So then whenever we're attacking, we have our totems helping add to the fuses. Um, then just got a ring and got some Life Accuracy, Chaos Res, Minus Mana Cost. Uh, a Mirrored Ring, which I guess will no longer exist, um, which was mostly there just to fill out my stats so I could balance Leadership's price, but also does some... Um, damage taken as recoup but the way my character is kind of set up defensively that doesn't really do much um a hat with a bit of reduced mana cost some suppress a uh, belt that mostly was there to try and fix strength as well um gloves that converted some of the damage which doesn't really matter too much but it means that there's pretty much no fizz coming in almost no fizz anyway and uh, boots that have immune to chill, so that with the chill immune and the freeze immune, don't really have to worry about elements for the most part. The boots, we're just fixing res, they're nothing too special. Um, and then some action speed as well. Um, I got a lot of spare sockets in the end, didn't really have anything I wanted to do with them, so I just left them there. Assassin's Mark and Mark on hit, haste and flame dash over there. Flame dash is really quick with all this action speed, so it's pretty damn um, convenient for mobility and defensiveness. As far as the passive tree is concerned, it's pretty localized. It's fairly bow heavy, so a lot of the bow nodes here. We do have increases and reductions to prod speed applied to bows. Now, thanks to using the quill rain and various passives on the tree and stuff, I think that's got to be like close to 200 damage just from that one uh, mastery. Um, do have a brutal restraint that I made sure did some level of proj damage and stuff. It's nothing too crazy, but it's pretty worth using. Bit of Ellie and proj damage and stuff. Um, the sublime vision, as I mentioned, and capping crit. Um, not crit. Capping Suppress with some uh, crit over there, and then the knockback on this master is actually kind of important. It does help to push things against a wall and push things away from you. Uh, it doesn't knock everything back, but a lot of very useful 
um, defensiveness against plenty of different mob types out there. And then using a Lionized Fall, which uh, just converts the Dagger Nodes here and the Claw Nodes here, and then also lets me get Leech. In most of my bow builds, Lionized Fall is very much a choice and a luxury, like it's something I think is pretty good, but sometimes I don't think it's about worth it. So in like half my bow builds maybe, I don't even use Lionized Fall, given the option, just because it's kind of a side grade. Uh, it has some benefits, some downsides. Um, this time around, I did decide to use it so that I could get a bit more crit, and then also the dual leech while getting the attack speed on this one. Um, I just basically didn't really know what else I was going to do with the build, except for maybe get a cluster. So I decided, yep, Lion Eyes Fall this time around. Uh, and then for the Ascendancy, I think the first points I went are Far Shot, then Endless Munitions. With that, I don't have to use a GMP uh, while clearing, but a GMP is going to be even more clear and even more um, filthy explosions if you really want to do that. But with this locked in Corrupt, I decided not to chase more links. Um, and otherwise, then went Gale with, uh, Gathering Winds and then Focal Point which helps for Assassin's Mark, but I was hoping it would do Sniper's Mark stuff. It doesn't, as I mentioned. Um, projectiles shoot away from the initial target and then land somewhere else, and then the explosions will never hit the main target. Uh, and also a Quiver. I think I made that one. I don't know, a bunch of spam of essences on a fracture base. Something like that. So that's about all there is to talk about the character. I think Explosive Arrow can be easily played next league. Um... Ignite is probably still the play if you just want a smooth explosive arrow character, but you can always do a hit base and um, doesn't even have to be something like this. It can be something quite a bit different. It's a pretty satisfying skill with the explosions, with the um, MTX, even without the MTX, if you're not using the MTX, it gets pretty explosive. Um, but this one's pandemonium and uh, yeah, a lot of fun to play around with. Uh, I'll have a build rating video for this league coming up soon. And otherwise, that's pretty much a wrap for Lake of Calandra. So thank you very much for watching. See you guys next time.